Corey Erdman here with Derek Edwards, who uh, doesn't look like he was in a fight, and that's because he was only in there for a minute. Uh, a shocking knockout over Badu Jack just moments ago uh, on Showbox here in Verona, New York. Uh, that couldn't have been something that even you expected. I know a lot of people didn't. Right. Not quite. I mean, uh, I know I can crack and throw a good punch, but I wasn't uh, quite expecting it so quick. You know, uh, like I stated, I didn't feel like he was necessarily really tested. Uh, in his previous fights, like knowing what his punch resistance was, but I know pretty much it was a matter of when I touch him to see how, how his initial re reaction was going to be, but it was a harder punch than I, than I guess I uh, expected. Uh, did you feel the same way when you threw that punch? When you landed that counter right hand, did you pretty much know right there that it was over with? I'm a pretty good counter puncher. Uh, I know when I hit him, actually I felt the ref in his corner. I understand, you know, he's on the mail of the promotions, he's their fighter. He has the show improved, but I would think that, you know, they would have maybe stopped it from the first knockdown because I know he was hurt. I could see the way he was stumbling, the way his, his reaction was, the way his eyes looked, the glossiness in his eyes, but, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Now, how much tape are you able to look at of Badu leading into this? Because I know, talking to people leading up to this fight, people mentioned that looking at the stats, he jabs more than almost any fighter out there, which means that one or two of those must be lazy once in a while, and it just so happened that you caught him over one of those jabs that he had hanging out there. Right. Uh, well, <clears throat> not not a lot of footage. I mean, and that's one thing I look at footage of fighters to try to get a you know, like any other fighter, try to get a broad sense of what type of style or what type of abilities they have. But I never try to uh, depend too much on that because you can you can change tactics about fighting different fighters. So and just more or less just uh, work on what I'm doing, what I what I'm doing well and uh, just try to counter that and react with what he's doing after I give him a certain look and just uh, work, work on that. Now, the last time most boxing fans would have seen you on, uh, on an American broadcast, it was against Matt Korobov, and you nearly did the same thing against Korobov. Was that kind of a motivating factor that, okay, the next time I get in the ring and I hurt someone, I'm not going to let that slip away this time? Oh, yeah, definitely. It did, um, and I, I take my head out to Matt Korobov. He's a hard, strong like you know, like you expected, a Russian fighter. You know, I mean, dedicated. I'm sure drains hard as hell. But that's another thing. Uh, it was some uh, some some uh, disagreements I had with my promoter. No excuses at all. But uh, that was another short notice situation. And uh, I needed the money. Chose to fight. But I, I had confidence in what I could do, and I chose to take that fight. You know, but I'm definitely uh, that definitely motivated me to let me know, put me back in the perspective of know what I can really do with this uh, with the the proper time and dedication uh, put forth in training going into the fights. Now, you said something interesting about that during the uh, the press conference, and that was that you know people think that just because a fighter has, has more hype or is better known that they must be somehow working harder in the gym and whatnot, but there are guys that are putting in the same amount of work who maybe don't have the same amount of money in the, in the training camp and whatnot. Uh, does that ever discourage you or does it motivate you to get in there and work a little bit harder so that when you get these opportunities, you make the best of it as you just did? Yeah. It mo definitely motivates me because uh, I guess it's just... It's, uh, just uh I guess you want to say it a uh, basic uh prime of human nature just to you know put just you get in you get into something what you get out of something what you put into it and uh it just uh, it's just uh that and just proving to what you can do just proving people wrong you know that's definitely a motivator You've put yourself now in a position where you're not going to be able. People aren't going to have. They're not going to be calling you last minute. You know, you're in a position now. You're in a position of power. You're probably going to get lots of notice for your next training camp. Uh, that must feel pretty good now for the first time in a long time. Damn good. I. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's things like when when things in your favor, just for the little, the minute things. It doesn't have to be a necessarily powerhouse promoter behind you, but just a more established. Uh, functioning, I guess, you well-oiled machine, a better team behind you, you know, doing things that, that has to be done, scheduled. It takes a lot of pressure and uh, weight off a fighter's shoulders to worry about, have, about having to worry about uh, getting prepared for certain things when, you know, they're somewhat lined up for you. And it just it makes your gym work just that, that much easier. And you've kind of put yourself in a better position now, too. You mentioned that you, you moved from North Carolina. You're now training in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I would imagine, with all due respect to the North Carolina scene, a much better scene, much better sparring, and just the environment there than you would have had back home. Definitely. No doubt. No doubt. I have no doubt about it. I, you know, a lot of hungry. I mean, me, I'm a guy from North Carolina, you know, Winston-Salem, and it's just like uh, uh, it just goes back to me in my younger years, you know, being younger, I know I just look at the old school uh, Tuesday night fights on USA Network, my grandfather, and just uh, 
during that time I was like seven, eight years old, and uh, he uh, he was just pointing out things to me. I mean, we never missed a night, and I just just fell in love with boxing, and uh, it's 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 just uh, something that's motivated me being a fighter, just to get my best and and just prove it doesn't like to say that old saying, it's not where you're from, it's where you're at, you know, in here, and what what you're capable of doing. And you're in a position now to maybe lobby for uh, that eliminator. And you're in a position where uh, when the year-end awards are written, you're probably going to be in contention for knockdown of the year and maybe for upset of the year. But does, do you like that term upset? Because like you were talking about, you know, maybe people should have taken you more seriously and that, you know, by calling it an upset, that's kind of putting you down a little bit too. But the thing about that, I'm going to say this, is uh, psychologically some fighters, they can, they, it can bother them and bring them down. But... Just let a lot of times you gotta sit back and let people say what they're gonna say because you can't can't p change people's opinions if they have a certain uh, observation or opinion about a certain thing. Just do what you do and uh, just keep grinding from there. And you just the work will pay off for itself. Well, we're happy it paid off here tonight, and we look forward to seeing you take that next step. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks again. Thanks a lot.